Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy. Today we're going to be talking about writing internal thoughts. This is anything that a prospective character is thinking to themselves in their narrative. And based on questions for our Q&A videos, you guys seem to have a lot of questions about how to format these, so that is the topic we're covering today. Now the first thing to know is that there are actually several ways to do this, and multiple ways to do this that are grammatically correct. Which one you choose will depend on multiple factors. I do think there is a best option. It doesn't mean that the others aren't correct or that you can't use them, but there is a specific way of formatting thoughts that I would recommend and I think leads to the strongest writing. So let's cover the different ways that you can format internal thoughts. Method one is what I'm going to call the seamless method, and this is the method that I personally would recommend. And I believe that it is the smoothest, most elegant, um, and most unobtrusive way of formatting thoughts. With this method, there aren't any jarring shifts in psychic distance, which I think leads to a very smooth read. If you're not familiar with the concept of psychic distance, we've got a video on that topic. I would recommend checking it out. I think it'll help with this video and understanding the benefits and drawbacks of the different methods. Essentially what psychic distance is, is how close the narrative is to the main character and therefore how close the reader feels to the main character. So the seamless method is when thoughts are integrated directly into the narrative. So for a first person example, I turned onto my street, but the street lamp was out. Was there a power outage? Maybe the light had been broken somehow. In this case, the character's thoughts, was there a power outage and maybe the light had been broken somehow, are directly integrated into the narrative voice. They aren't differentiated in any way. We're not told, hey, this is a thought. But because we're in first person, we don't need to. In first person, everything is a thought. The main character is telling the story in first person, which means, well, the entire thing is in their point of view. There's no need to separate the thoughts in any way. However, this also works in third person. So let's look at a third person example. Martha turned onto her street, but the street lamp was out. Was there a power outage? Maybe the light had been broken somehow. Even in third person, we can seamlessly integrate Martha's thoughts into the narrative. If the psychic distance is close enough, meaning the narrative is close enough to her character, we still have an understanding that everything happening in the narrative is what Martha is feeling, thinking, or experiencing. Therefore, we don't need to set apart the thoughts in any way to know that Martha is thinking this. So I really like this method, and this is the method that I would recommend in most cases. Unless you have a specific reason to use one of the other methods I'm about to talk about, I think that this is the best way to format internal thoughts. However, when wouldn't this work? This method might not work with an omniscient narrator, or if you have a very distant narrator. If you have a very distant third person narrator, you might have to set apart the thought somehow because the narrator and the character aren't as closely linked. Or if you're an omniscient point of view, your omniscient narrator is kind of a distinct entity from your characters, you may need to format the thoughts a little differently to make it clear what is being thought by the character versus the omniscient narrator and who the thought belongs to, considering you're gonna be in a lot of people's heads. So let's talk about some other methods. The second method is what I'm going to call the filtered method. Now this is similar to the last method. The only difference is that we're going to use a filter to indicate that something is a thought. So let's begin with the first person example. I turned onto my street, but the street lamp was out. Was there a power outage? Maybe the light had been broken somehow, I thought. Or we can do the exact same thing in third person. Martha turned onto her street, but the street lamp was out. Was there a power outage? Maybe the light had been broken somehow, she wondered. Now, neither of these are technically incorrect, but in many cases, they are unnecessary. To see the thought in the main character's narrative means that they are thinking it, so we rarely need to be told that it was a thought. Of course it's a thought. Now, if you want to use this method, you probably don't need to use it for all thoughts. In fact, that would get very, very cluttered. You probably only need to use a filter when you specifically feel it is necessary. Maybe you're writing in omniscient point of view and you've just had a point of view shift and so you need to indicate the new character's perspective that you're now in. Another possible reason you might want to do this is if you're writing in first person past tense and the thought is something that the main character was thinking specifically at the time the events happened, but they maybe don't agree with it now. Maybe Martha now knows why the lamp is out, but at the time she didn't know why the lamp was out. That might be a reason to indicate in the narrative that she was thinking, hey, why is this lamp out? Because there's a difference in her thought process depending on the time. This is a little tricky, but that is one reason why you may want to use a filter. So the final method is what I'm going to call the direct method. This is a method that is very popular, however, I think it is often unnecessary, and it's one that I would only recommend using 
if you feel it's needed for the specific parameters of your story. This is where we're going to set thoughts apart in italic. So to use the same example again, we'll again begin with first person. I turned onto my street, but the street lamp was out. Was there a power outage? Maybe the light had been broken somehow. Or Martha turned onto her street, but the street lamp was out. Was there a power outage? Maybe the light had been broken somehow. Here we're told what is a thought because it is set apart in italics. For many writers, this is their natural impulse for how to format thought. Many people will often even use this method combined with the last method, so they'll set it in italics and then use an I thought clause. I really think that this is pretty much always unnecessary. Um, in that case, you're kind of doing two things that are redundant stacked on top of each other. Again, this is useful for more distant narratives. This method is almost always redundant in first person. Like I've mentioned a few times, if we're in first person, it's in the main character's thoughts, everything is a thought, so it's a bit odd to set apart some things and indicate that some things are a thought when technically everything around it is also a thought. Especially if you're writing in present tense, you will probably never need to do this. However, again, this may be useful in omniscient point of view or more distant third person. If you have a very distant narrator, you might want to indicate the thoughts in italics to help guide the reader through those psychic distance shifts. So why is that? Why is it that writing a thought in first person and setting italics in an otherwise third person narrator actually pulls the psychic distance further when you're actually getting closer. That's actually why, because what you're doing is highlighting that the protagonist is different from the narrator. You're highlighting two different voices, and so what that does is it increases the discrepancy between your narrator and your main character, which increases the psychic distance, even if the psychic distance in the thought itself is closer. I hope that that makes sense. I think one reason a lot of people do this in third person is because they think it's a closer narration, but actually what it's doing is, is pulling the distance of the entire narrative out. So if your goal is to create a close psychic distance, you probably want to use the first method. Now that we've looked at all three, it is important to know that all methods are technically correct. Grammatically, these all fit the constraints of the English language. You're not writing incorrectly by picking one over the other. However, I've mentioned a few times, my recommendation is to use the first method as much as possible. It's the most elegant, it's the most seamless to read. It doesn't create any jarring or really any shift in psychic distance, and I think it's the most widely applicable. The other methods you should use if you have a distinct reason for using them. You can use the other methods if the point of view demands it for whatever specific reason to your story, or if it's what you want as a stylistic choice. You also probably want to stay relatively consistent throughout. Once you pick a method, you should really only breach that method if you have a very specific reason to. You probably don't want to be blending methods all the time, um, using all three of these. It can be very confusing. Especially methods two and methods three, you really don't need both. If you're using the filtered method in one paragraph and then you're using the direct method in another paragraph, it's just psychic distance whiplash at that point, there's no need for it. So if you know that you're gonna need to set some thoughts apart, pick method two or method three, and then use method one for all other cases. So that is how to format internal thoughts. I hope this answers all the questions I've been seeing on this topic. Let me know what your favorite method for integrating thoughts into the narrative is. You guys already know it's mine. Seamless method all the way. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye.